Let us see an example. So here we want to find all the words that come after a number, like 1, 2, 3, up to 10, and then followed by some particular word, like one cat and two dogs and that kind of stuff. Okay. So to do this, we're going to use the backslash backslash s regular expression item. What this is, it matches backslash backslash s, s will match anything that is not a white space. Just makes it easy to specify a word. Earlier we were using something a little bit complicated to specify a word. We're just making it a little more simple now. So what we're saying is, again, we're creating a regular expression for, for this. So we've got uh, the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. And we've got a group. And since we put the vertical bars, we're saying either 1 or 2 or 3 or 10, followed by a space. Then you've got a space followed by a plus, right? What that means is one or more spaces, right? So what we are saying is the, the number word may occur. So for example, instead of one space dog, it could be one space, space, space dog, right? We still want to pick up the word one and, and the word dog, right? So if there are multiple spaces, we want to account for that as well. We don't want to assume that there is exactly one space between the words, okay? So that is why we, the regular expression has a space followed by a plus. And then we are saying we've got another group, which is uh, the backslash, backslash s plus that is one or more non-blank characters non-space characters so that's our regular expression once we have that we can easily match we can say sentences and then uh, of string detect sentences comma num word okay um, and that that will give us the, the result and so we've got all the sentences that have one of the number word and then we say string extract num word Okay, so this is going to give us uh, all the sentences that have at least one num word. That is, all the sentences that match this uh, regular expression. And then from those sentences, we can extract the, the actual num word itself. Okay, so if you run it, you're going to see results that look like this. 10 served, 1 over, 7 books, 2 met, etc. In this example, of course, all the sentences are well formed in the sense that you don't have multiple spaces between the words, but even if they existed, our regular expression would catch them. Let's look at another example. This time we want to find all the contractions, that is, all the words that have an apostrophe in them. And then, of course, we want to get the part before and the part after the apostrophe. So the pattern is going to be, you know, one or more characters a to z a to z that is of course you're putting it in square brackets which means any one of them is acceptable so you've got a string of alphabets plus saying one or more of these followed by an apostrophe followed by uh, one or more characters okay so any word which has an apostrophe in it like they are right so it's a contraction t-h-e-y apostrophe r-e Okay, things like that. Uh, okay, so that's what it is. So anywhere there's an apostrophe in the middle of the word. That's the pattern. So then we can do contraction is uh, is this pattern. So we, we are just creating uh, the regular expression with the groupings in them so that we can catch the groupings. Then we use sentences and then uh, we are uh, using string detect sentences pattern so the sentences that contain that pattern but what we are doing here is we are using the pipe and then we are using the uh, the square brackets which is to extract only those particular sentences that match this okay and then we are extracting just the pattern okay so till now we've been content with identifying patterns that uh, sentences or uh, strings that match a particular regular expression and we've been also uh, extracting some of the matching patterns. Okay. Now we look at replacing certain things. Now regular expressions are also useful for replacing things. So find all contractions. We have done this before. Okay. So we're looking at str underscore replace. Okay. So let's say we've got a set of st uh, strings like this, apple, pear, banana. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to say replace all the vowels with a dash 
right? So it's tr underscore replace x, which is this thing, and uh, replace the occurrence of a bobble, a e i o u matches any bobble, replace it with a dash. Okay, so if you do that, this is the result you get dash p p l e and then so on. Clearly, what you're seeing here is that it matches, uh, it replaces only the first occurrence, right? So it replaced a, but it did not replace the e. Here it replaced the e, but it not re did not replace the next a, and so on. Okay. So if you want that, you can always do str underscore replace underscore all. Okay. If you do that, then it's going to replace all the occurrences with uh, with whatever you want to substitute it with. So that is uh, in so far as string replace goes. String replace is actually quite useful in scenarios like this. So suppose you have strings like this, one house, two cars, three people, and you want to replace the ones and twos and threes with actual words like O N E one house, two T W O two cars, and so on. Then you can use string replace all like this, right? So you're saying string replace all X, and then you're saying replace one with O N E two with T W O three with T H R E E etc. So if you do that, then you'll find that the result comes out like this. So that is also useful uh, in text processing. str replace is a useful function. Okay, let's look at this example here. Swap the second and third words of each sentence. So you've got sentences, which is part of the string R package. And then here we are saying, let's, uh, let's create three groups for the first, second, and third words. So here we are saying the, the regular expression is double quote and then uh, here we are clearly saying anything other than a space and one or more of that. So that's the first group followed by a space and followed by the same thing again. So that's the first word space, second word. Of course we could account for multiple spaces and stuff which we are not doing. Then space, third word. Okay, so that's the overall uh, uh, overall regular expression. So what we're saying is take sentences and find the matches of this regular expression and replace it in this way. Okay, that is you put the first word and the second and third words are replaced. So instead of first word, second word, third word, make it first word space, third word space, second word, right? And these numbers as before are the numbers of these groups that we have identified. Okay, and then we're just looking at the first five such things right so obviously if you look at the result you will find that the second and the third words have been jumbled up have been exchanged okay so that's one way uh, uh, one example of how you can apply this apply you know, replace or you could switch the first and last letters in the words right is we've got a word like let's say apple we'll put the e at first and put the a at the end now the question is after you do that, which of those strings still remain to be proper words within our original words uh, vector? Okay, so we are saying x is str replace words, and again we are writing groups for the first character, for the second character, I mean for the first character and the last character with any number of characters in between, zero or more characters in between, right? So again, you see here within square brackets, you are saying a to z, a to z. So which is any alphabet, any character, any alphabet really, we've got that as a group. So that will match the first character of uh, of a word. We are using the words vector. Okay. And here is the second char second and uh, many characters, right? So you've got the first character, you've got the last character of the word, followed by uh, in between there are uh, zero or more other characters, zero or more characters, right? So what this will do is this will give us the three groups. This is group one, group two, group three. And if you want to swap the third and the first words, then the uh, first letters, then you can write it like this, right? The first letter is backslash backslash three, which, which was earlier the third letter. So that goes to the first. And then whatever matches the other characters in between, keep them as they are, which is backslash two. And then put the first letter there, which is backslash one, right? So if you do this, X will now be a, a collection of all the words which in which uh, for which we have replaced we have exchanged the first and the last letters okay but now what we want to do is we want to find out which of these words in x still remain to be proper words which is that is those words 
also occur within the original words uh, list, right? So I'm creating a new data frame where the word equals x, which is the, the transposed version, right? And we, from our earlier discussion, we know that we can do a semi-join with the words, with the data frame in which the original words form the word, right? So when you do a join, of course, both of these words have the columns have the same name. So what it's going to do is it's going to retain from the from this data frame which we created here we didn't give it a name so in that data frame it's only going to retain those which are proper words okay so it'll be interesting to see whether there are any such words which when the first and last characters are replaced continue to be proper words so let's see that's interesting to see the example here okay which of those strings still remain to be words okay so i'm doing here i create the x Okay, in fact, if you take a look at X, you will see that uh, the first is A, of course, the first and last, and this is Abel, which has now become E-B-L-A, so Abel got this thing, clearly Ebla is not a word, right, but we've got that, so now let's see which of these remain to be proper words, okay, so here you've got, so you've got a complete list here, it turns out that in each of them, Okay, dog and God. Okay, that was good. In deer and read, deal and lead. So there are many such words actually. Uh, in many of them, uh, the first and last letters are actually the same, like area, dad, dead, uh, and so on. So many of them are things in which the first and last letter are exactly the same. So if you replace it, nothing happens. But clearly there are examples of other words in which the first and last letters are not the same, like God. Uh, like lead, no, is on, okay, so there are many such examples, so you could do those kinds of operations also here. Let's use another function called str underscore split, so we are taking a string which has some characters, so don't think of this as a regular expression, this is just a string with some vertical bars, and you can use str underscore split and give a regular expression on which to split it. Okay, so this is the regular expression here. So str split takes a regular expression and splits wherever the regular expression matches. So if you do that, uh, the result comes out as a list, right? It doesn't come out as a vector. So the result comes out as a list, right? So for example, uh, the reason it comes out as a list is that in this particular case, we have given it one string. But in general, we would give it a vector of strings, right? And what it will produce is, if you have five strings, it will produce five different items in a list. Uh, but of course, we know that we have only one string, so we are looking at only the first element of the result, and therefore the result comes out as A, B, C, D. Notice that the regular expression that matched has been removed. Okay, so uh, that's the idea here. The reason we are putting this in backslash backslash is because uh, in a regular expression, this has a special meaning. We are saying escape that special meaning and just match for it directly. Okay, so you can also do str split um, and then unlist, right? Because the result comes as a list. But most of the time, we are not interested in the result being a list. We want the result to be just a vector. So whenever you've got a list and you want to convert it to a vector, you can always do unlist and you'll just get back one list, right? So notice the difference here. We had to use this get me the first element of the list notation but here we don't have to do this you do unlist and it comes back as a single vector so even if you had passed multiple strings here everything would have come back as one single vector we'll see an example of that later okay and uh, just seeing some more things so we here output the words of each sentence as a list okay so uh, this is what we did earlier so sentences head five and then we do str split with space right that is we've got many sentences and for every sentence we want to split it into corresponding words so if you use str split here you're going to get back the result as a list okay and of course if there are 100 sentences the list is going to have 100 elements each element is a vector of the words in that particular sentence so that's what it's going to come out you can try out and see the results you can also output the words as a matrix by doing simplify equals true, this we saw earlier. But the best thing, as I had suggested earlier, is to unlist. 
Okay, so if you're doing all of this, it's the same, spl splitting the string. But then when you say unlist, what it does is, uh, it takes all the elements of the list and combines them, all the elements of all of the lists and combines them into one long vector, right? So here, you're getting, suppose there are 100 sentences and each sentence has many words. What you're going to get is a list of vectors with each vector containing the words of one particular sentence, okay? Here we are doing almost the same thing except that we are saying unlist. So what that is going to do is it's going to convert everything and give you back just a single vector. Okay, so you can try it out in our studio and you'll see the example. In fact, let's go and go ahead and do that actually. Okay, so here's the first example. Uh, sentences head 5 str split with space, right? So here you see what, what's happening here is that uh, the we, we've, we've taken only the first five sentences because we said head five. Okay, so we've taken the first five sentences and when you do a string split, it's giving the words of the first sentence here, right? So this is the first element of the list. So these are all the words of the first sentence as one vector. Here are all the words of the second sentence as another vector and so on and so on, right? Now suppose you want all of these words as one long vector. Okay, so here you've got a list with five elements. Each element contains a vector consisting of all the words of that particular sentence. But suppose you want it as one large vector, then that is what unlist, that is where unlist comes into play. So everything is the same except that we are also doing an unlist. So if you run that, you now see the all the words have come together, right? It's not a, it's not a vector, it's not a list anymore, it's just one large vector with all of the words combined. So that is what unlist does. Unlist is very useful when you have a list and you simply want to convert it into a vector. Okay, so that's what this is doing. Now you can do str split. Notice what goes on here. Earlier when we did an str split with space as our splitting criterion as we have done here, right? So when you do splitting with uh, space as our criterion, in fact if we go back and look carefully at the results we got, Notice that the last word has the space sitting, has the period sitting along with it, right? Because we are saying the boundary, uh, we, the, we are using space as the boundary to split. So Planck's period, so the period has got included with the word. That's not very nice. We would like the period to go away and just the word Planck to remain. So period, background, in fact, the last letter of every sentence. Well, the last letter of every sentence, the period is attached along with it, which is not nice, right? So that's what we're going to try and correct now. So we've got this. Now we're saying, uh, I'm first we'll show the thing with the uh, string view. str view all, that is we want to all ma see all matches. And here we are saying boundary word. Okay, so boundary word is what we are saying. So in this case, notice that it matches all the words, but it leaves out the period, right? Because when you say boundary word, it understands that period is not really part of the word. So it does that, okay? So if you do string split with space, then of course, as we saw earlier, the last word has the period tagging along with it. But if you do the same thing with a boundary word, string split x boundary word, and then again, because string split produces a list, we want to look at only one element. Notice that the period is missing from here, okay? So we would like to use boundary word when we split uh, sentences into words. Okay, just a few finishing touches and we are all done with uh, regular expressions. Okay, now till now we've been just using regular expression as a string, okay, in most of the cases and that has worked well for us. But sometimes you may want to do a regular expression match and you may want to say, for example, uh, you know, don't consider case as significant, right, so ignore case, things like that, right. So when we, till now we've just been matching. But on top of the matching, suppose we want to put additional control, additional conditions. That is also allowed. So for example, if we do string view fruit nana, okay, and that is really a shorthand for string view fruit regex nana, right? So it's just a short form, right? Instead of just, uh, instead of saying it's a regex, a regular expression of na na, we are allowed to say it is string <coughs> and the function just treats it as if it's a regular expression. Okay, now if you're just doing this, then there's really no point in saying regex NA, NA because that's just more work for us. We would much rather do this. 
But if you want tighter control, so suppose you have three strings like this, banana, 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 everything is the same except that the case is different. This one is all lowercase. You've got a sentence case where the first word, first letter is uppercase and this is completely in uppercase. <coughs> suppose we want to match all of them. So suppose we say string view bananas banana. This will obviously match only the first one, right? Because uh, by default, regular expression matching is case sensitive. But suppose we want it to be case insensitive, then you can say string view bananas and then now we use regex. Regex banana ignore case equals true. Right? So we are saying match it but ignore the case, in which case all the three words bananas would be matched. You can try it out with the code that I have given you. Another example, uh, suppose we've got this, we've got line one backslash n. Backslash n stands for a new line character, right? It's as if you said line one and then this is on the next line and that is on the next line. So in computing in general, when you say backslash n, you're saying it's like typing a return and going to the new line, okay? So suppose we say string extract all and uh, this is, you know, so get me all the lines uh, all the matches where the lines it starts where it starts with the uh, with line at the beginning right notice this carrot which says beginning here yeah. now this by default will match only this first one okay it will match only this uh, line one because that's the only one at the beginning of the string expression given but suppose we wanted it to match uh, each line separately because this really has three different lines in it Suppose we wanted to match three lines separately, then we can do this, right? So this one clearly matched only this line. But if you say multiple e multi line equals true, right? Then it's going to treat this string and treat the fact that it has three different lines because of the backslashes, treat them separately, and you will get the result line, 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 right? So it could match this, and then it started afresh with this one because it said every new line is supposed to be treated as a separate string and you get that okay so those are all the different options you have with uh, regular expressions if you want tighter control then you can explicitly say regex and then give options like ignore case or multi line equals true and so on admittedly we will have very little op uh, uh, requirement to use these things but if they do arise then you can use them okay so here we have covered uh, regular expressions pretty extensively Okay. Now, in this course, when we are doing text processing, we are going to be using only a very small subset of these regular expressions. Uh, but I can guarantee you that going forward, when you take a job and you're doing any kind of uh, text processing, you'll find that your knowledge of regular expressions comes in very handy. But of course, in order to do that, you have to have a good deal of practice so that some of these things are simply ingrained in your thinking. Okay. So, for example, if you've got an Excel file, you've got uh, you know lots of text available to you right uh, in an excel file you can convert it into a csv file uh, put it uh, you know read it into r and then you can process it for in all kinds of sophisticated ways okay uh, or alternately suppose you have like we said earlier you've downloaded tweets and you want to look at uh, for example all the hashtags that appear and create some kind of a, a histogram or some kind of a plot of the number of times each hashtag appears Great, you know how to do that now. You can match for regular expressions. Or alternately, if you have a number of files sitting in a folder and you want to process it, then of course we have not looked at any specific techniques yet on how to do that. But if you poke around a little bit in uh, in this uh, package called TM, uh, in the R package called TM, you'll see how you can process even those kinds of data. I'm not getting into it because uh, for the rest of the course, all the de text mining that we are going to be doing, we'll be doing with just the tables and data frames. But those other options are available to you. So my goal here was to uh, really communicate to you the power of uh, text mining. Uh, and of course, prior to that, I thought that your uh, an, a deep understanding of regular expressions will stand you in good stead when you're, whenever you're dealing with textual data. Increasingly, in today's world, uh, there is a lot of textual data. Not all our data that we process are just numeric tables, right? You've got tweets, uh, you've got Facebook posts, you've got uh, meetup group posts, you've got a lot of information which is completely 
contextual in nature and yet we need to extract information for example from a bunch of emails all of these things okay so that's why i thought it's a good idea for you to uh, learn text processing uh, but also prior to getting into actual text processing functions to understand regular expressions